It's kind of like when we were in high school, you know, we used to, back in those days, I remember years ago, we had the teachers that had overhead projectors. Remember overhead projectors? And when they first get in and they flip them on, it's just, phew, the light is just perfectly reflected onto the wall. Beautifully, perfectly reflected. Then you start putting the overlays on the shadows. That's, those are filters. Whatever those are, those get projected onto the wall. Some of you remember Plato's famous cave analogy, you know, where the prisoners were all chained in there and there's this fire burning and there's these flickering shadows and the prisoners, all they know are the shadows on the wall. Talk about early, early uh, stages of Hollywood, <laughs> except you're chained in. It's almost like Hollywood where you can't leave the theater. You have to, <laughs> you're chained onto the seat. <laughs> You can't go out and go to the restroom or go for some popcorn. You're just chained in on the seat. You can't go anywhere. They actually took those shadow, shadows on the wall, on the cave wall, to be reality. Very famous Plato's cave analogy. And then when one of the prisoners finally got free and went out and realized that, that it was just a fire burning and there was a bunch of characters walking by outside the cave, and the shadows were just being reflected on the wall, he went, oh, I will go back and tell my friends, and they killed him. Wow. Wow. This was before, before Jesus and the whole story of Jesus coming to say, it's all good, it's all love, and he was killed, crucified, you know, the, the man, the body part. So, so this is like a convincing job, the spirit has to work with the mind, to loosen the trust from the investment in all kinds of things. Well, what kind of things do you invest in in this world? Money. Money. Money seems to be a symbol that's so interchangeable for so many other symbols that it has taken on an exaggerated sense of worth. And when you read A Course in Miracles, Jesus calls them, you know, he says, you really believe you would starve in Lesson 76. He says, you really believe you would starve without stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs. Mm -hmm. He sounds kind of detached, almost like he's poking fun mm -hmm. at the green paper strips and metal discs. Now we can update the course and put plastic cards. Yeah. <laughs> We're out here in, in California. Plastic cards, you gotta put them. If you really believe you would starve without stacks of green paper strips, piles of metal discs, and a nice variety of plastic cards. <laughs> you, you know, he says, you really believe that some fluid pushed through a sharpened needle can ward off disease. That's what he says. He says that he's actually poking fun at the constructs that have been given so much faith, so much trust, that we put trust in the laws of economics, we put trust in the laws of medicine, we put trust in the laws of nutrition, we put trust in the laws of exercise, <clears throat> we put trust in, you could just go on and on and on and on. Even what goes in this world as alternative modes and methods of healing, you know, moving energy and so on and so forth. That energy that's getting moved around is not the energy of all that is. That stuff doesn't move. I mean, it, there's nowhere to move. It's just all that is. <laughs> if everything is energy, then where is, it to, where is it to go? How are you going to move it? <laughs> you know, so even the alternative healing methodologies are all part of the dream too. So basically, to come to the last filter is to simply allow the mind to be convinced that this is a dream. I mean, Really, really, what would be so frightening about a dream if you knew that you were dreaming it? Uh, people have reported for oh, the last couple decades, uh, you know, where they've had lucid dreams, and it's cool. It's a cool experience to, to be lucid dreaming. Nobody says, oh, it was terrible, I was lucid dreaming. I was so all, all mighty and all powerful, I just couldn't stand it. You know, nobody says that. They say, wow, it was cool. I knew that I was dreaming, and I was just watching it, and it didn't scare me at all. What would a monster, how, how could a monster be scary if you knew you were dreaming it? 
Only if you believed it, it was yeah. real. Only if you believed it was real. And it's like, and that's where awareness of dreaming comes in, as being important. You know, you've heard people go, wake up and go, because I had that was just a dream. Why are they glad it was just a dream? Because they realized that it had no power to really hurt them. That's why the whoosh. So, Jesus actually, at one point, he says, awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teachers. Isn't that a beautiful way to say it? Can you address this section in the court, the hero of the dream? It yes. To fit in right now with yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. The hero of the dream is, is the body. And, and all of its serial adventures, you know, it's like the focal point in, in that dream. It's the hero. It's the one that, that seems to be the, uh, the star. The body's like the star of the show. And without, without that star, it wouldn't be uh, much of a dream at all. In fact, some of you might remember there was a movie that came out in 1999 called The Truman Show. And Truman starts to get these little signs and symbols that it's all made up. Like it's all a set. None of it's real. And then all of a sudden, as he gets closer and closer to finding the escape door of, of leaving and walking out from the, the set, then Christ off. That's, that's another way for calling the ego. Christ off. <laughs> you're off Christ, you're, it's ego. Christoph tries to, in the last second, try to convince him, you're the star, go say something, you're live to the whole world. You know, tries to build him up as the hero. You're the star of the show. This whole show is for you. This show wouldn't be anything without you, but it's speaking to the body, you know, as if it's the body that's the hero. And, you know, all these cameras and everything, and, and Truman says, you never had a camera inside my head. You know, you never really knew what my true experience of who I am is. It has nothing to do with this. In fact, you know, Chris Off will say, you know, there's no more, there's no more reality out there in the world outside. You are safe in this world. You have nothing to fear, and then he comes right around and says, you're afraid. You know, it's the ego speaking out of its, its two sides of the mouth. So basically, the hero of the dream is the body. And as long as the mind stays identified with the hero of the dream, it will be afraid. Because there is no safety on a battleground, and there is no safety and peace and love and harmony in a distractive device that was designed to keep the mind not knowing who it really is, as spirit. There's no safety on, in the script. Even when people give me this stuff, sometimes I'll hear, but we, we're told to be in the world, but not of it. Oh, sneaky, slippery, slippery, slippery. <laughs> That's really sneaky. It's like, okay, does that give me, now I have justification to kind of do a balancing act between spirit and the world, so I can kind of, you know, I can kind of, kind of be sunk into the world a little bit, in the world, but not of it. That's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get back to more of the teachings of Jesus, you know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Never the twain shall come together, you know, illusions and truth, when you bring them together, only one remains, and that's spirit. So, this is a journey, is starting to really see the nothingness of form, like the Buddhists talked about, the emptiness of form, but being guided with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will use the forms to release them. The Holy Spirit uses time to teach you that there is no such thing as time, to take you back to that timeless, moment, that is the gateway to eternity. Uses symbols to teach you that they're all symbols and that they all are equally meaningless. That's exactly the method of operation of the Holy Spirit.